how many solutions are there to the equation a plus b equals to c, where a, b, and c are all positive integers? Since it is a linear equation, it has an infinite amount of solutions. For example, you can have 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 5 equals 7, or 99 plus 57 equals 156. What about the number of solutions to a squared plus b squared equals c squared? This is just a Pythagorean theorem, so again it has an infinite amount of solutions, like 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, or 12 squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. Increasing it by 1 degree gets us the equation a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed. So how many solutions does this have such that a, b, and c are positive integers? We could try 1 cubed plus 2 cubed, but that is equal to 9, and 9 is not the cube of any number. We can do something like 4 cubed plus 10 cubed, but that's equal to 1064, and again, this isn't a cube number. In fact, this equation has no solutions at all. No matter which combination of a and b you insert, the result will never be a cubic number. Maybe a to the 4 plus b to the 4 equals c to the 4 will have some solutions? Except no, this equation doesn't have any solutions either. Same goes for degree 5, 6, 7, 8. Same goes for degree 100 and same even goes for degree 100,507. This is known as Fermat's last theorem. The equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n has no positive integer solutions as long as n is greater than 2. It is a fairly easy to understand theorem, however, proving it is not. In 1753, Euler proved it for the case n is equal to 3. Fermat himself proved it for n is equal to 4, and in the 19th century, it was proven for n is equal to 5 but there are an infinite number of values of n to be solved for, so individual number solutions don't work. Sophie Germain proved the theorem for a large class of primes, while Ernst Kummer proved it for re all regular primes. But again, this isn't a full proof for the problem. Finally, in 1994, British mathematician Andrew Wiles proved it and solved the 350-year-old problem for all n is greater than 2. The proof is over 100 pages long and uses theorems related to elliptic curves. For such a simple problem, the proof required for it took over three centuries and used various different fields of maths that were seemingly unrelated before.